it's pretty easy to represent whole numbers in binary. As we already know, if we have 1, 0, 0, 0, then we know that this one here is an 8, this is here is a 4, this one is a 2, and this one is a 1. However, what if we have a slightly more complex number than 8? What if we start using decimals? What happens is things get a little bit more complicated. Let's say that we want to represent the number 8.75. We can use two ways of representing this. One is called fixed point binary and the other one is called floating point binary. We're going to have a look in this video at fixed point binary and then there'll be another video on floating point binary. When we're representing this we first need to know how many binary digits to assign to the left side of the decimal point and the right side of the decimal point. Let's say that we're going for a system of four digits before and four digits after. We take our first number here which is an 8 and we just represent that like we usually would. With the 7.5 however we're not just going to do it as we normally would. For a start we wouldn't actually get 75 out of four digits. The maximum we could get is 15. So what we do is we have four possible spaces to fill because we've got four left over from our total of eight. This one, the first one after the binary, after the decimal point is going to represent 0 0.5. The one just after that is going to represent 0 0.25 and you might have noticed a pattern. They are halving each time, they're dividing by two the same as these are doubling each time. So this one is 0 0.125 and this one here is 0 0.0625. So we know that to make up the 0 0.75 we're going to take the 0 0.5 here okay, and we're going to take the 0 0.25 there and those two added together will make our 0.75. So our final number is 1000.11 0, 0, 0, 0. and then if we wanted to make these extra, fill these extra spaces that we've got here it's a 0, 0. You can add as many zeros to the right as you want, it won't make a difference to the number. It's the same as in decimal if we have the number 3.8 these here don't make it 3.8 thousand, it's still 3.8. It's the equivalent of adding zeros over this side. But what about if we have a slightly more complicated number? Let's have a look at what would happen if we have... Let's, let's write at the top here uh, 8.63. So 8.63. 8.63, we know that with the left hand side it's going to be exactly the same. Okay, now we have to try and make this here with the four digits that we've got left on the right. To make it a little bit easier, a system we might use is if we take 0 0.63 and we multiply it by 2, our answer is 1. Point two six. We're going to take that first number there and we know that our first number is a 1. Then we're going to take this point two six here, 0 0.26. We're going to multiply that by 2 and we know that our second number is 0 0.52 and it's a 0. Okay, so our second one here is a 0. We've got two more steps to go. So, oh sorry, that's 1, yep, 0 0.52, yes. Um, that multiplied by 2, so 0 0.52 times 2 is 1.04. So we know that the next one is going to be a 1, and even though we already know we're going to do it anyway, 0 0.04 times 2 is 0 0.04. Eight. So we know that our final number, because we've only got four spaces, is going to be a zero. Okay. As you can tell, if you carried on going, you'd get quite a few zeros before you started hitting the one again. So this 
is there. So if we wanted to represent 8.63 with 4 before the decimal point and 4 after, this is what we would get. However, let's take this again and let's try and convert this back. So we've got 1, 0, 0, 0, and we know that that is an 8. 1, 0, 1, 0. We know that this is a 0 0.5. This one is, I'm just trying to get some space, that's why I'm writing it below, 0 0.25. This is 0 0.125, and this is 0 0.0625, okay? So that's what they represent. Let me just put a little line to those so we know which ones they represent. Right, if we put this back, you can see what happens is we've got 0 0.5 plus 0 0.125, which makes... 0 0.625 so we've got 8.625 now that's not the same as our original number and the reason is that we didn't have enough um, digits after the decimal place to make it accurate so a disadvantage of using fixed point binary is that you don't always get complete accuracy with the part of the fractional part or the bit after the decimal place basically the bigger you make this number, the bigger you make these digits, okay, the more digits you add here, the bigger the number you can represent. The more digits you had add here, the more accurate the number is. Because think about it, if we had 1 here, and then we had 7 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we'd be able to make a very or relatively accurate number because we wouldn't have to stop here. However, if we had 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then just 1 there, the most accurate number we would be able to make was something 0.5. Okay? So we would, we would be able to make a large number, yeah? We'd be able to make all of those added together, but we wouldn't be able to make... Um, anything more accurate than 0.5 or obviously 0 0.0. So, just to reiterate and go over what we've done, this is the method that you can use to represent fixed point binary. Fixed point binary means a fixed point in the middle that doesn't move backwards and forwards, it's agreed on. And the bigger the number there, the more accurate it is. And the bigger number there, the larger the number you can represent, or the more digits, not necessarily the bigger number. Okay? And that's that.